Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, I guess now in retrospect, what do you feel about the team's performance over the week? You know, I think, um, you know, just kind of looking at it phase by phase is, is how I typically do it. Um, you know, I think, you know, winning and losing starts and ends on the mound. I do, do not think we pitched well. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of things that are correctable that we need to go back and, and, and look at and do, which I think we are we already started doing that. Um, and then defensively, you know, we did not play our best. I think we have a good defensive team. I want to be very clear. I don't think we, we played great on defense. Offensively, um, there were a few bright spots. Um, and what I told the team, you know, last night is, you know, scoring 18 runs over the course of a weekend or averaging six a game, it's not enough to sweep, you know, in league. It's not enough to win all three games at all. I do think it's enough to win two out of three, you know, if, if the other elements are in order. And so I think it gives us a baseline uh, there. Uh, base running, you know, nothing really reared its head as a bad play or any of those types of things. I think from a team uh, standpoint <clears throat> relative to attitude, you know, um, competitiveness, effort, you know, those types of things, I think being in that environment will, will help our team and our group of players uh, advance, you know, in that way. As far as the defense is concerned, is it attention to detail and execution, or is it still guys time on task? You know, I think uh, a couple things. I mean, I'll give some credit to the opponent, uh, putting pressure on us by getting the ball in play and getting on the ball and play with guys on base. And, um, you know, ironically, a couple of the mistakes were in the outfield, and you don't really see that. Um, I thought Tommy was exceptional at third base. Um, I thought Michael was solid. Um, we didn't turn that one double play on Friday, which we ended up losing 10-4, to four, so it's hard to say that. But I think that was a critical play. If we get out of that inning 3-1, to one, um, I think that game can – turn out a little bit differently. I really believe that in, in a lot of facets. Now, does Saturday play out the same way? So you don't you never know that. Um, I'm not as concerned about the defensive part of it, to be honest with you. I think um, I'm going to give Mississippi State credit for putting pressure on us, uh, getting the ball in play. I think those things are very fixable. Anything stand out that was alarming about the pitch? I mean, I mean, I thought <laughs> I'll just give the positives. I thought Nate for ten pitches was was great. Uh, clearly, he has to throw more than ten pitches on a weekend. He's one of our better guys, and um, I thought Griffin competed well in the game uh, on Saturday. I think uh, the guys that had pitched in those environments before um, were a little more settled, you know, and, and maybe helped them in that regard. I think it's a good learning experience, you know, for a lot of those other guys. And, um, you know, there's just a lot a lot to that dynamic that will shake out and, and will get figured out. I mean, to this point, it's, it's pretty hard to argue. And again, I know it's not the same thing, the non-conference and the conference schedule, but I have good optimism that we'll pitch better and we'll pitch better this weekend. I think a lot of people would use the phrase wake up call, but is it more of a Yeah, no, nah, these guys are, no, I don't, I don't, that's, they, they uh, weren't going in there and not wanting to win and in, in, in some ways uh, not prepared to win. It, it, we got beat by a team that played really good two out of three. And, um, you know, one th message for me right now is um, to them is when you're go it's going well, you know, and it's gone well here for the most of, of two years and it's gone well for this team. You know, this year it's never really as good as it seems. And when it's bad, it's not as bad as it seems. It's how you look at it. And right now we need to look at improvement and in every phase of how we play. And um, that's all we can do. And it's, it's certainly not getting any easier. And so that's, that's not a surprise to anybody. You know, this is a really good conference schedule that we have. And that, I would include that team that we just played in that. And it was not a surprise to me. Those top five in the, in the order are really, really good, as, as they showed. Um, you know, their pitching coach is doing a nice job. They got, they got them throwing strikes. and. Um, you know, they, they played in a good atmosphere. You know, that's the first time at that ballpark that I've seen it like that. I've had a lot of good success there in, in the past. And, um, you know, they, uh, they had a very good home field advantage this weekend. What did, um, what did State do at the plate that made, a, made it such a, I guess,
guess end up being a different task for you guys? Yeah, uh, just kind of going through guy by guy. You know, Armani Larry's, you know, been in college forever. Thought he was a great player at New Orleans, you know, in 2022. And um, I, I didn't – I missed that, that he was going to be back this year. I thought he was – it was his fifth year. I thought he was done last year, and it feels like he's been around forever. Um, so kind of a, a Gavin Dugas type, you know, guy, you, you know, is and I respect him as a player and as a competitor. David Mershon is, is one of my favorite opponents in the league, man. He's a really good player. Like, he's a really good player, and he's put on, like, 25 pounds and uh, has really good instincts and, and takes tough at bats. I mean, Jordan, you know, had been on fire coming into the week, and we actually kind of kept him reasonable, you know, until the three-run homer yesterday. Um, but obviously a talent, a real talent. Uh, Hines, you know, if, if he gets going, you know, like he did with a couple of those home runs, they're going to win a lot of games. I mean, he's a dangerous hitter. Um, Hus Jack, uh, you know, he's really improved from last year. Uh, again, another old player. I think he's a fifth-year guy, too. Um, and so that makes it a pretty tough, you know, first five. And then I just at the bottom of the order, Kohler, um, Long, those guys, good experience also, you know, coming from other places. Uh, they just, they fought. They fought our, our pitchers pretty hard. Talk, oh, guys. Guys. Talk a little bit about, you know, obviously, you mentioned this competitive group. They want to get back out there. Mm -hmm. Opportunity this midweek provides, and then we can be sitting here a week from today and, Maybe a totally different tune with obviously a big talent opponent coming Yeah, I mean, for me, this time of year, uh, the tune doesn't change unless it ne really needs to. Um, you know, I think uh, mentioning the midweeks, very good team. I think they have like 16 wins already or something like that. So that'll be a good challenge. Um, they have a lot of good players. Um, watched a bunch last night while we were waiting for our chartered flight. Um, and then. Um, you know, on the weekend, you know, the team that we played for the national championship last year was, you know, draft prospects all over the field. I'm excited. We haven't played them at home yet since I've been here, and um, it's going to be exciting. You know, I think, uh, you know, I would be concerned if our players weren't excited about this week, but I, I think they are. And, and, and you match that with some eagerness to get back out after a tough game yesterday. I mean, Friday they beat us. Uh, Saturday we beat them. You know, obviously I had to hold on, you know, there, but we beat them. And then uh, yesterday they, they, they got us pretty good. And um, so it's uh, good we get to, get to play tomorrow. Have you thought about a pitching plan for midweek? Yeah, Javen Coleman will start tomorrow. Um, and then um, we'll go from there. Getting guys action, you know, but not necessarily extended time. Is it developing into something that you see kind of two to three weeks down the road? Or no, it's not that. It's win the game first. Um, and uh, there's a number of things that go into that. And I mean, we've used a lot of guys. It's either 17 or 18 pitchers have an appearance. That's, I don't ever remember having that or doing that before. Um, and there's a really fine line, you know, who's better pitching often, who's better when they're fresh, uh, how does it match up. Right now, um, now that we're past the five game weeks and, and all the games jammed up, you're in a little bit more of a normal schedule. I think that'll help that group a little bit. Um, not just from maybe there's not that extra game where you're pushing a guy into a second or third appearance or not. Um, you can match up a little better. I just, we can work a little bit too. Like some of these guys, we need to practice. Like we're practicing at one thirty tomorrow before we play a 6.30 game. Like um, we haven't had a ton of time of that. And uh, it's something that I'll look at in doing the schedule moving forward and make sure we don't get caught up in that time of year of travel on the weekend, travel for a midweek, play a five game week, and then into league. Cause we need to get on the field, you know, with them. Looking around the SEC, anything surprise you? I uh, did not pay much attention, uh, to be honest. Um, you know, for me, uh, they're all really good. You know, I mean, it. Uh, yeah, it's 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 something else right now. It, it was the same last year, and uh, there's a lot of talent, and uh, there's a lot of teams that present things that are tough to deal with. So that's why you kind of have to focus on yourself. And I'll be honest, I kind of did that. Um, I saw. Um, Florida won two out of three, and notice that one because of uh, 
we play them next weekend. And um, other than that, I couldn't probably tell you who swept or won the series or any of that stuff. How do you guys like uh, Luke and Gage responded since their uh, starts? Um, I talked to Luke a little bit um, on Saturday, and he's he's uh, just such a professional about how he goes about his business and so competitive. It's like, he's, uh, I'll, I'll be better this week. And, you know, I, I thought he gave us a chance to win without his best stuff. And, um, you know, we kind of got caught in a, that middle part of the game right there where, um, you know, it's it tough to kind of take him out. Like I, I probably could have got him out maybe a, a batter or two quicker, but the guy had thrown 24 scoreless innings. And for my book right now, that's who I want on on the mound and he's earned that right to do that and um so i ex i expect that you know gage is highly competitive as well uh i haven't talked to him um you know i didn't talk to him yesterday um you know was focusing on the game but uh, i'll get in touch with him today or tomorrow um but he's certainly talented as, as he's proven to this point and i'm sure eager to get get back out there and compete this weekend the staff as a whole collectively what did you see body language wise as the weekend Oh, they want to do better. I know that. I mean, if they're okay with that, that's not okay. I mean, like, um, you know, um, but I, I have good faith that it will be better. And, um, you know, I've, I've been on, I've had games like that or, or weekends like that in the past where you felt like, man, that was inevitable. Like it was coming because of maybe a, a talent deal. I haven't coached at LSU my whole career, you know, so um I have a little more optimism that they, these guys will be able to respond to that. And, and there's a few guys we need to push up the chart a little bit. Like, they have more talent, you know, than where they're at right now. And it's, it's our job to help them get that out of them. And, and then the, the, the pitching roster for the weekends is, is very fluid right now. And that's not a bad thing. That's, that's a good thing. Um, and, and today, like, we're, we're splitting the off day a little bit. Some guys are going to get on the mound and work today in preparation to potentially pitch tomorrow. And if they don't pitch tomorrow, then we'll have like a simulated game thing on Wednesday um, to make sure that there's a lot of guys, like I'll give you an example, like Micah Bucknam, his first outing, he was lights out, like lights out. And I was so excited about it. I put him out there the next day on one day's rest and he didn't, didn't necessarily throw great. But in that one outing, he showed me like, man, like th there could be something here. Like that's a guy I'd like to get back on the mound and uh, just haven't. And um, we've been keeping the run totals low until this weekend, and uh, and we didn't. So we need to go back to the drawing board a little bit and make sure we're pulling the best out of each guy in terms of how we train them, how we uh, prepare them, how we pitch call for them, uh, all of those things to maximize their, their talent. And so we're uh, deep diving a lot of that right now. Was it tough adjusting to an offense that was just so aggressive early in the counts? Um, you know, I mean, that's what they do. It's our job to respond to that, you know, in terms of pitch execution. And um, in, with a few of our guys, I would think that would actually work to their advantage. It didn't. It did, it did not this weekend. So that's something we need to look at and we need to be better at this weekend because there's, there's some teams in the SEC that profile that way, that, that will we'll attack it that way. Yeah, I thought um, Saturday was great. I mean, I literally, like, hey, you're going to double play ball right here. Like, it's, I don't think I said Tommy, but it's like left side of the infield. Like, it's it's coming. Like, just throw this pitch with really good conviction. And he did it, and I was really proud of him uh, for that. Um, you know, got a couple guys out, had a couple good strikeouts early in the inning, and then um, we weren't able to, to finish that inning. Um, so, but I, I see some things that I'm, I, I like, and um, – feel like there's been some good improvement there. The outfield, is that, do you get enough data on that now to feel good about where you're going, or is it still similar? Yeah, similar? I mean, 100%. no. I mean, and, and what I mean by that is, um, and this is a good thing, I just think a lot of them, a lot of them are the same. And uh, across the board, a lot of them are the same. I think uh, Josh played well this weekend, um, and I would expect him to, you know, having the experience that, that he does, um, and there's some guys that provided some good things um, in the weekend. But you know, 
we're just not where it's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. And, um, you know, until, until I feel convicted about that, we, we won't, it's, it's, it'd be undermining our opportunity to use our roster effectively. And I would love it. You know, if two guys said, Hey, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm playing, that's probably a pretty good sign for how they're playing in our team. But, um, I don't, I don't feel that way. And then you get into this dynamic that's super important is like you can't have them going out there playing for the next opportunity. They got to play for that opportunity and execute their job. And, and sometimes with players, um, that's just part of their growing process. And they're going to have to do it when they show up in a you know, minor league spring training and there's 33 outfielders out there. So I guess in that way it's good for them. Do you have an updated timetable on Jaden and Chase? You know, Jaden threw a, a competitive bullpen on the field on Thursday night at Mississippi State, and that was very positive. And so um, hopefully sometime in April um, would be my guess. Um, uh, Chase is not as, like I said, he's pretty much two months behind that. Um, we're not to the point in the calendar where we could say, hey, we could could move that up yet. And is there an update on Ethan Fry? He hit uh, batting practice on um, Saturday and Sunday. And we're, we're, hey, out of one out of 10, 10 being the best you ever felt in your life, you know, where are you? We're, we're creeping to the, the upper half of the, of the scale. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll see. But um, the guy I'd like to get in there, you know, in, in terms of what you were just talking about, Michael, with the outfield situation. Um, you know, his availability a week, two weeks, I'm not, not quite sure yet. And um, on Sunday, your decision to start Ashton Larson at DH, what did you sort of see from him? I thought he did a great job. I mean, he smoked the ball the first at bat, uh, drew a walk. They got that three-run inning going in, in a two-strike count, and then uh, doubled the left center field. He's going to be a good player. And, um, you know, when I mentioned not being settled, it's because of, you know, Ethan was, had some good at bats before he got hurt. Ashton in a SEC game, you know, um, took mature at bats, and um, that's a good thing. And so um, we're just going to keep developing all of them and then play for that game that day. And then uh, hopefully over time, you know, you could feel like you could settle into something. Brady Neal kind of inserted himself in that outfielder mix. What would you like from him this weekend? Um, I liked uh, he had a – the bases loaded walk in the inning where we tied the game. Um, I thought Saturday um, he showed good poise on making some plays on some balls went up in the air and and that was the game that it was obviously a little wobbly. We're off to a great nine one start and they're chipping away and you know a mistake you know out there could have really really impacted the game and played clean. He obviously ran past the one yesterday. Um, you know, I, I didn't see that on, on video or what, or asked him what happened. But, um, you know, he swung the bat well leading into the series. And, you know, with trying to balance the lineup, get matchups that fit against the opposing pitcher and that also benefit our pitcher in terms of defense, um, you know, right now I want to want to get him going and, and have him in there because uh, it's one of those guys when he plays well, we tend to do well. Some value in that atmosphere that you talked about. Being oh yeah, 100%. Well, it's it's going to be the same. I mean, moving forward next weekend, and then um, you know the one after that. So, and yeah, I mean, it's again, hat tip to them. That was that was what you think about when you um, uh, coach it in the SEC. And like I said, and it, I've just had good fortune. I haven't really seen that. You know, I mean, we swept them in 22, won a Super Regional there. I hadn't seen that when the game was going in their favor. And, and boy, they get going. And um, good atmosphere. Thoughts on Louisiana Tech? More? Yeah, uh, like I said, a lot of wins. Um, Lane's a good coach. Um, confident. Um, have some old players. Again, like, I don't, I guess this is the last year of the COVID. Like, you'll look at a name on a scouting sheet and going like, how is this guy still in college? Like, <laughs> and they're probably saying the same thing about Travinsky, you know what I mean? Or <laughs> Mac Bingham, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, they have a few of those guys and uh, they do good. They have a good coaching staff. Um, 
and um, you know it's gonna be, be a good game. Michael Braswell had a also had a pretty good weekend. Is he one of the I guess one of the positives? Oh, the definitely. Yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate you saying that. Um, yeah, I thought he took uh, he took a bat like he looked like he'd, he'd been there before, um, and um, you know I'm really like I tell I told you guys at the beginning of the year it's hard to imagine this team without him. You know, and um, and I think the best is still yet to come. So, yeah, I thought that was a positive. What about Tommy and just defensively, maybe some of the things that you saw, maybe back, back in the fall of him really kind of wanting to hone Yeah, down. he's just a competitive guy. And, um, you know, he came here because I said, you're, you're playing third base and we're going to make you better. That's why he came to LSU. And, um, yeah, he has. And I think he took a lot of pride in it. And um, when you have talent, and you have um, determination, and you have a specific plan to do something well, you can get better at it. And I think all those things combined have made him a better defensive third baseman. And he played exceptional this weekend. And um, like I said, it's for me, it's obviously it's just about winning. Um, but to win, the play has to be right. And that was that was a real positive in terms of the plays. Is how he played defense this weekend, and how he's continued to play defense early this season. Feels like that's not something just comes him personally with his future, but also you guys. Oh, Way yeah. Down yeah, well, it's both. Yeah, it's, let's not kid ourselves. It's both. I mean, that place was packed with high-level professional baseball people this weekend. People don't – I mean, the players don't know because they know what they look like. I know what they look like. And the, the dudes that were pulling the trigger on the picks in the first round, they were there this weekend, a lot of them. And so, um, you know, I think he's one of the best – we were talking about it yesterday, like um, – He's one of the best players I've ever coached and certainly one of the best players in the country right now. And uh, I thought he hit like that. I thought he defended like that this weekend. Good. All right, guys. All right, thank thanks, you. Jeff. See you tomorrow. Thanks, George.